so welcome all the participants uh, from all over the world uh, today we have uh, snowflake into end tutorial project and the session is to be handled by Teresa, specialist data engineer and moving to who we are what we are we are multi cloud for you and we are uh, we have over hundred and thousands of strong community of technologists from all over the world we deal with technical sessions, consultations, and real-time project on multi-cloud strategy, data science, and AI, blockchain, and stream engineering. We also help technologists to share learning and get opportunities through our partners worldwide. This is a short infography of how we are going. We have offered 1,000 plus sessions through our platform, www.fifthia.com. We have 300 plus speakers associated with our platform, and we have uh, 27,000 plus members associated with our platform. And these are the few uh, mastermind days and MEPs continuously getting us. And moving to, we are the academic partner of Alibaba Cloud, and these are the few courses which we have done in line with Alibaba Cloud. And you can get the certifications directly from Alibaba Cloud. How we can help you? We can help you to build your knowledge, digital presence, and help you in our ways when you are looking for jobs through our community. And all you can access through our portal, www.fifthir.com. As a part of our community, uh, we are going to provide free level one certificate for all the participants. You can access the certificate by providing the secret code, and the secret code for downloading the certificate will be provided at the end of the session. And this is a sample certificate uh, which you can uh, get after the at the end of the session and directly you can share the certificate to the social media platform from the portal www.fifthir.com. And moving to the speaker of the day, uh, it is uh, Teresa. Uh, she is a senior data engineer at top Fortune 500. She has been associated with different roles in the organization such as specialist data engineer, senior software developer. She has, she has got a couple of certifications from AWS as well as uh, Microsoft. She is an AWS certified data analytics. She is a data engineer on Microsoft Azure, and she is a certified Snowflake Pro engineer. You can see more about him in the given uh, LinkedIn profile. And without any ado, now I am passing the control over to Teresa. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gavaskar, uh, for your brief explanation, uh, like about multi-cloud as uh, as well as about me. Thank you. Uh, so you're going to present my uh, PPT, right? Hello. No, Teresa. I can. Uh? It's visible to all. Hello. My screen is visible. Yes. Yes, it okay. is visible. Yeah, okay, you can proceed. Okay. How I can hide uh, hide this one? Uh, are you seeing this? I don't know. Hmm. This this black color one in the right hand side. It's not a problem, right? No, no, yeah, it's not a problem. No. You can, we can maximize the screen. I think no, you can maximize the screen. So. Uh, it, you, can, you can present. You can, you can present. The okay, slide. okay, so okay. That. I can start without delay. I can start. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good evening to all. Uh, so today, uh, so we are going to see that end-to-end -end ETL process. How we can do it in your Snowflake. Okay, I hope uh, already I have given the session here uh, regarding that stream and task and the brief high level explanation about the snowflake and thanks for giving me uh, giving the opportunity once again to deliver the end to end uh, pipeline. That means how we are doing the end to end data pipeline in your snowflake. Okay, so uh, I'm just giving the brief explanation first. What is ETL? So ETL in the sense you are extracting, transform, and load your data in your data warehouse. Okay. So mostly when you are coming to the uh, Snowflake, so we won't tell that is a ETL. 
instead of that we will call as a elt because you are extracting and loading the data and then only you are transforming and then you are keeping your finalized data in your uh, data warehouse that is what we are doing in snowflake because uh, so nowadays it's moving from etl to elt Okay, that why because of the snowflake and data maximum data warehouse, we are doing the ELT process. So that we are going to see today uh, how we can make the pipeline. So today I am not telling that automated pipeline uh, because the automations we have to use the stream and task that I'm not taking the part. Why? Because uh, so the, already I have explained the stream and task in the uh, previous uh, session. So I'm just keeping that. I'm just telling how uh, we are going to design the data pipeline uh, from the source to uh, data model. Okay, that is what I am just uh, planned for the preparation today uh, because some people uh, they know how to work in Snowflake, uh, but uh, there is some lag. So where you will get the data, where you are, what you are doing in the each and every steps, right? So that I'm just giving today the brief explanations. Okay, so what is first initially in the ELT process instead of ETL, which is now considered as the ELT. OK, so in the ELT process, first you have to extract the data. So where you will extract the data, some uh, suppose if your file, maybe it's in your S3 bucket or your blob or your uh, any Google uh, buckets or maybe in your local system or uh, maybe it is in your like a HD, uh, F FTP file, FTP servers where somewhere your data is there, right? So how you will extract the data? OK, that is the first task in your ELT process or the pipeline. OK, data pipeline process. First, you have to extract the data. OK, that we are doing here uh, in this example. I'm just taking uh, the CSV file and JSON file. What are the other format we have? So other than CSV, JSON, we have the parquet file, Avro file and ORC file. So all files XML files also acceptable in your Snowflake. All the data file format, it's accepted in your Snowflake. If it, so for this example, I'm just taking CSV and JSON. It's straightforward CSV and JSON files I have taken. So I'm just extracting these two files because I have sample copy of CSV, one CSV file, one JSON file, which is I have in my local. Okay, but in the industry, it might be in your local or it might be in your server or it might be in your S3 bucket. OK, so wherever it is, you have to extract the data. So extracting the data. So that means you know where the file is and how you have to extract it. That what we are going to do in your Snowflake. Now I know that my file in my uh, local. So what I will do, I will create the internal stage in your Snowflake. I hope you know what is the stage because in Snowflake we have two stages. One is internal stage, other one is external stage. What is the use of the stage? So the stage is used to hold your data. Okay, hold your data or files from your external places. OK, from your external places means maybe in your data, uh, maybe data it's available in your local or the data available in your S3 bucket or any other cloud storage um, devices. OK, now I am just considering my file is my local. So if it is in my local, I can use the internal stage because that is two stage is available in your Snowflake. One is internal stage, other one is the external stage. Internal stage we are using uh, to hold the data which is available in your local. If it is an external stage, it is used to hold the data which is available in your cloud. OK, cloud service layers. So I'm not going to talk about the external stage today. Just I'm creating one internal stage. It will hold my data. Uh, for this, I have to use the put command. I will tell all those things in the demo. OK, by using put command, so I can by using Snow SQL, I can push my data which is available in my local to internal stage. You can ask me any other way I can do it. Yes, you can do by the uh, UI. Also, you can uh, take your data from the local to stage, but I am prefer that by Snow SQL. OK, I can show you the both the way in the demo class and OK. So now my file is 
in my stage okay internal stage it, which is available in your snowflake so now the data move from your outside that means maybe it's your local maybe it's your s3 it came to your stage that means it is inside your snowflake okay after it came to the stage you can transform the data you can able to see the data i will tell you in the demo how to see the data which is available in your stage otherwise how we can pass the stage data to the employee or whatever the table which you are creating in your landing layer we can say it's a landing layer or staging layer or uh, like a first two you can say it's a source layer whatever it is you can call it okay maybe uh, it depends on the company they will say it's a bronze layer silver layer gold layer or source layer curated layer or like a landing layer or baseline layer so whatever they may call according to their uh, preference okay now i am just calling it's a source layer or source zone okay in the source zone i have created two tables because i have two files which is available in my local and i am passing them to the internal stage so internal stage also i have two same files okay those two files i am creating two tables okay which is called uh, in sales and us sales okay so now so in the source layer i am creating two table so this table i have to get the data or i have to get i have to get the data or records from your internal stage okay so what command i will use for this means just to copy into command okay from stage to uh, any table you have to use the copy into command even if it is a external stage also you have to externally you have to create a pipe and then the pipe automatically it pull the data which is available in your external stage to the particular table okay so i am not talking about that stage uh, external stage now i am just talking about the internal stage so it's very easy when i am using copy into command so automatically the stage data will be moved from the stage to table okay whatever the table i have created then what i am doing in the next layer okay now this st storage layer or like a source layer i have the raw data right so i have the raw data which is i have taken from the stage now in the curated zone what i have to do i can do some transaction transformations or i can make a one to one transformations that is it depends on your project okay now maximum i am not touching any part of the source uh, i am just giving us it is whatever the rows its or columns it's available in your source zone to curated zone okay just i am adding additionally some surrogated key because that we need for the maintaining the primary key in your existing the forthcoming tables okay that is the only thing i am adding extra in the curated zone and as well as source zone from the stage to source zone and those source, uh, source zone to curated zone okay so in the curated zone also i have two files the same name but what is the difference you can give for the source zone and curated zone just the schema okay what i am using the source zone is the schema is source okay and for the curated zone i am using the schema as curated okay and then after i move the source table which is available in the source zone it's moved to the curated how you will move this it just by some programming language or like a, um, you may know like a, how to transform by zone zone to curated zone by procedure also you can use so i am just here i am using all python related work so we will see that in this uh, demo okay i have one procedure to move the data which is available in your zones to uh, curated okay just one python program that is i am just moving from source to curated then finally what i am doing so from curated zone i have the two tables right because this is the uh, like for example if you are taking in the banking sector every day you are getting that uh, um, full uh, transaction details right the full transaction details if you are coming for the data warehouse what you will do so you want to keep as it is in your data model right the data model it is nothing so which will give you um 
that is two way of data model before that i just want to explain that that is two way of data model okay i hope you know little bit about the data modeling there is two way of data modeling we can do it one is star schema other one is the snowflake schema here i am just using the star schema star schema in the sense i have only one fact table and the dimensional say, uh, dimensional table it's surrounded by that Okay, but if it is a snowflake schema, the dimensional table also have the sub dimensional table. That is the only difference uh, for the star schema and snowflake schema. But there is a lot of advantages there in the star and the snowflake uh, that you just learn it uh, uh, in the data modeling. Um, any any blob or some block or something you just go and study. But here I am using the star schema. Okay, only one fact table surrounded by four dimensional table this is what i am going to create it from the curated zone tables okay in the curated zones i have two tables from these two tables i am creating this data model this is what happening in the industry if, it, if you are working under the data warehousing definitely the name of the um, schema or name of the layer will be different but the concept is one and the same they will do one to one transaction or they will do some additional transaction or they, they will additionally some columns they will create it. OK, that is the only difference you will face it in the industry. And finally, they are making the data model. OK, data model in the sense from this curated zone, what you are getting there, maybe it's a baseline table from the baseline more or one or more baseline table. They are creating the data model or data mart. OK, so in the data model for my um, case um, or our data source, I'm just creating one um, fact table. OK, one fact table uh, and four dimensional table. I'm just going to take it. OK, so this is what I'm going to explain today in the demo. OK, I hope there is no doubt about it. Data source where you are getting it's from the local. I'm keeping that in my internal stage, not the external stage. Why I'm getting from the local. If I want to use the external stage, the data might be in the S3 bucket or any other blob. And then from the internal stage by using copy into command, I'm keeping all the data from the stage to the uh, source zone tables and from the zone zone to curated zone. So I'm just keeping one procedure. OK, to move the data from the source to curated and again I am using one more procedure to move the data from the curated zone to data model. OK, this is what I have planned to explain and you can ask me. OK, now you are doing in Python what I can do for the other procedure like in in worksheet even even if you have seen in the snowflake worksheet you have there is two kind of worksheet one is sql one is python okay so the same way i can do it in the sql as well as the python so if i am using in the python they will call it a snow park okay snow park is nothing so what you have used in the PySpark only okay suppose if you are migrating your PySpark project into snowflake so there is little changes in the PySpark and snow park only in the functions like window functions or some analytic functions you have some difference other than that you can move directly your uh, PySpark or python project into your Snowflake that is also possible and suppose you are working as a data uh, a database developer or Oracle developer or some PLC called developer. You can also move your uh, whatever the procedure you have created for your transformation that also we can move to the snowflake. OK, by using procedure so. Uh, and already I told you the automation I'm not talking now, so what? this automation that means every layer now I'm just doing the manual process okay because I'm just doing only only initial load process now I'm not doing incremental load if I want to do the incremental load obviously I have to go for the some automation tool either you have to use the airflow or either in 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 snowflake itself we can do it by the stream and task and dynamic table also okay that i'm not doing now but if you want to do that it is easily we can do it uh, every layers you have to create one stage uh, one stream and task so what is the use of this task stream it is used to find your uh, initial low, uh, means uh, delta changes in your data right so delta changes in your data that is captured by the stream whatever the data captured if there is any data in the stream automatically the task should be started okay so the task 
task you can schedule by cron job or non cron job or you can use some uh, parent uh, parent task or ch child child task whatever it is you can use it in your task okay inside the task only you are going to call your procedure which is you have written for this transformation and from curated layer to data model transformations okay those procedure you can keep inside your task and you can schedule it if you schedule it then automatically the process will happen whenever you are having the incremental load automatically the all the process will be happen step by step as per the schedule and you will get the data model table every updated data which is available in your data source clear okay let me move to the demo I don't know how to remove this one, uh, but I just keep as it is. I hope you can see my screen. OK, before that, I will just explain what the demo I am going to show it because already I have completed the demo, so I will show you. So I'm just going my data. OK, so I have created one sales data warehouse. OK, whatever I have told in the pictorial representation of that demo, I'm just telling in your snowflake. OK, so I'm just created one sales data warehouse database. OK, inside I have uh, one, two, three, four, because we know that the public and information schema, which is already available, availed every uh, database while you are creating. So externally, I have created common consumption and curated and source schema that is used for every layer okay so the common uh, layer or common schema i have some tables it is exchange rate because i haven't shown that in the block because because we are dealing the money for the indians and us other 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 country monies also right so we need the effects of exchange rate so for that i have created one table which is available in your common schema okay other than that in the file format also which is uh, available in your common schema what are the file format because i am going to use one csv file and json file so i have the two file format which i have created which is available in your common why we have to use the format file format because while you want to move from stage to table the copy into command you have to use the file format so without file format also we can do but this is the preferred way you have to do it okay and then after that let me go to the source table or source schema the source schema i have two tables that is what i have explained in the uh, block okay i have two tables one is in sale and other one is us sale and i have the stage also here the same stage I have uh, my internal stage. Actually, I have to keep this in the common. OK, no problem. I have in the stage here the source table and I have the sequences also. So why I have created the sequences to create a surrogate key because we can't able to insist the primary key in your snowflake. So I'm just keeping externally some surrogate key to maintain the record. And I have the procedure here. That is three procedure I have. So what? OK, the, the, the procedure, it's a dummy procedure, so I'm not using any procedure for the source. OK, and next one, uh, close the source and then let me go to the curator. Curator also, I have two tables as I told two tables and the sequences uh, again, I have created to maintain the circuit. Key. OK, and then go to the consumption. Uh, I think, OK, I have missed that curated uh, sequences. OK, table. And consumption, so I have four dimension table that what I have said, one fact table. OK, in the data model, we have one fact table and four dimension table. OK, other than that, I have some sequences which is I have created for the each dimension table. OK, because the dimension table, we are not having the primary key. So for that, I have created this sequences. OK, uh, then I have one procedure. That is what I have said. The procedure, what is the use of this procedure? This procedure, it's take the data from the curated layer and it is converting that data into your data model. That means it is going to give your dimension table and fact table. This is what I have planned to present it today. OK, let me move to the worksheet. 
Okay, go to the demo which I have created for today class. Just I'm going to drop my database. What will happen if I drop? What will happen if I drop? So all the stages, whatever the table which is created in your sales data warehouse will be removed. So I just delete it because I'm going to do it freshly now. OK, the first step, what is the first step? We have to create the warehouse and you have to create what is the user? Uh, uh, what user you are going to use it? OK, I'm just going with the account admin. I'm just going with the Snowpark ETL warehouse that I have already created. So if you want, you can generate it. OK, use the role account admin. So automatically it will come account admin. And next I have to choose my uh, data. Basis, right? So the database I'm just using. Use database. OK, so before that I just take OK, I will go use database. OK, uh, sorry, uh, so you have to create the database because I have dropped that. So you have to create the database. So the syntax and all you just recall it, create or replace database if not exist then create the sales data warehouse. Now you can use it or simply you can use create database database name. OK. OK, now I have used uh, this database. So see here I automatically got this sales data warehouse, right? So but default you are getting the public uh, schema, but if you want to change, you can change it because each layer you have to be very careful on your schema. OK, just I'm creating four schemas as I told in the demo. OK, so all uh, four schemas created. If you want, you can go and check here. I think the data warehouse is not. OK. Sometimes it might look like this, but it's created. OK, let me wait for that. OK, let me wait for that. But it is created source curated consumption and common schema for this particular database. OK, before that going to the next level, I'm just explaining a little bit. What is this snow park? OK, so let me go to the uh, OK, I can uh, I can go to the new worksheet because usually you will use the SQL worksheet, right? If you are running any procedure in SQL or you are creating any objects, you will use the SQL worksheet. But today I'm going to use the Python worksheet. OK, how it is look like you can see. OK, first you have to import because it is look like a Python. OK, because it's it's a Python code not look like it's a Python code. So I'm just using the package snowflake dot snowpark. OK, so and if you want to use any functions, that means uh, if those who know this PySpark and Python, you will know that the PySpark have a lot of functions. Those all functions we can use it in the snow park also. If you are using any function, you have to call one by one in the import statement. Otherwise, if you are worried about that, then you use the import star, then automatically whatever the functions you are calling, right? So that will be added in your um, particular programs. OK, so now what this program is doing, what this Python code is doing first, it's automatically create the session by using the session command. OK, so here I have mentioned the table name is equal to information schema dot package. You know that uh, inside the snowflake, I have this information schema information schema. I have the package. OK, if you go and check it in the uh, normal uh, SQL, you will get it. Uh, then what I'm doing, so I'm just calling this information schema dot package uh, table and on that I have one language column. I'm just filtering the language column which has only Python. OK, if you want, you can go and check here. I have created this uh, table. OK, I have deleted. OK, no problem. OK, no problem. So we can move with this one. OK, just run this. OK, just run this. What you will get? You will get the information schema package table, the language column, which is equal to Python. You will get it. 
okay got it so the language column because this particular table it has because it's inbuilt okay i'm not creating anything it's inbuilt while you are opening worksheet you will get this program only okay in the language uh, only those who have the python uh, the language which has the python you will get okay that's on what it is doing it's a default program i am not using that okay so i just go to my demo uh, i am going to show the same demo with the help of session.sql okay because mostly we won't use that way we will use the session.sql what it will do because always you want to uh, do it in the SQL manner, right? So because all are familiar with the SQL, so they want to do in the SQL. Then what does that SQL command it's did? Just it is taking that particular information schema package and in that table where language is equal to Python, it's taken, right? That is uh, created by the data frame. But here I'm using the same SQL what the data frame does. Okay, so what I'm doing in the uh, data frame, I'm just creating one data frame that is nothing but the SQL what it will give you as a table that I'm converting as a data frame. Okay, so for that I have to use the command session dot SQL. That means the session is nothing the snowflake session. Explicitly you can call in your PyCharm also other ID also you can use it. That time you have to give all the session details and then you have to create the same command. But I am doing in the snowflake I don't want anything. Okay, I'm just doing in the snowflake I can I can call the session it directly access all the snowflake. Uh, what is the user? What is the warehouse I need to use? What is the uh, database? What is the schema I have to use? Who is the user? Everything this session will tell us. Okay. So now if I run the same, okay, I can go control C, I can paste it here. Okay, so this will also give you the same output. Okay, this will also give you the same output. Okay, whatever the uh, way you want to prefer, you can prefer it because most of them it's a SQL background. I'm just telling this. Okay, this is a one way how I can easily move with the Python. Okay, I can use the same SQL uh, for the Python also. And suppose if I want to check what is my current uh, role database data schema what is the current schema what is the current warehouse usually you will use this in your normal sql right normal um, worksheet along with the sql so this is the same way i can do it in the pi spark or snow park also okay i'm not doing this but you do this okay uh, practice this very well then only you will learn it why we have to use the session dot sql Okay, whatever the query you want to use it, then you can use the session dot SQL. It is nothing matter, right? Just you have to create one data frame. Okay, that is equal to session dot SQL, whatever the query you want to make it from your table or whatever it is. Okay, then for our project, this is just about the introduction about the snow park. Okay, now we are moving to the database. I have created one database and I have created four schemas. Okay, now I am using uh, the schema, uh, okay, I have used, okay, these all I have created. First, I am using the source schema, okay. Why I am using the source schema? Because in the source schema, I am having the internal stage. I am creating my stage here, okay. So, how you can create the stage? The, the SQL command is for that is create or replace stage, stage name. So, I am just creating one stage, okay. So if you want to check the stage of what are the files you have it, you can use the list command ls at my internal stage. That is the name of the stage. Just check it. There is no files because I haven't uploaded any files on your stage, right? So if you want to remove any files or all the files, you can use the rm command. Okay, rm command, you can use it to remove all the files which is available in your stage. Okay, so that is all about the stage. Okay, next I'm going to load uh, the my local data which is available on my drive to this stage. Okay, for that I have to use the snowflake. Okay, so sorry, snow SQL. I'm not going with the UI, uh, but you can go with the UI also. Okay, I'm just always prefer with the snow SQL. Uh, so snow, because 
then only you will learn what more command put command, right? Uh, because uh, so many companies, they might use the put commands. Uh, if it is a small files I can use with the UI, that is also the restrictions. Uh, 10 maha bytes, still 10 maha bytes only I can use with the uh, UI. If it is more than then obviously uh, in the industries you are using uh, uh, more than 10 megabytes uh, data, right? So obviously you have to use the put command. Okay, uh, I have used the uh, so schema, but it is not at mode. Okay, yeah, it's mode, right? Okay, let me go and check how many. Okay, now the sales data warehouse is visible for you, and you can see how many uh, schema I have created other than the public and information schema, the four. Okay, which I have shown in the term PPT. Okay, so then um, I have created the stage. So what I have to do next, I have to take my data which is available on my local to stage. For that, I have to use the put command. Okay, before that, I have to create the uh, stage. Okay, uh, that means file format because so while I'm moving into copy into command, I need it. For that, I'm just going with the common schema because I told already the file format I'm I'm keeping in the common schema. Okay, because this common schema should be accessible to all other schemas. Okay, that is why I'm just keeping in the common. Okay, I'm creating two file format. Uh, I don't want to explain all this details uh, just to go through it because how to create a file format, create or replace file format, file format name and what type of file format it is. It's a CSV. Here it is JSON and what is the field del delimiter for the particular file and whether you want to skip the header. Uh, now if if null if is coming, what you have to do it and uh, all the compression is auto whatever you want, you can keep it in your file format. Okay. Uh, just run this command. So now the CSV format is created. And I'm creating the file format for the JSON also. Okay. If you don't know what is file format, please listen any uh, any videos uh, regarding the file format, how to create it and what are the other attributes we have to use it when you have to use those and all just listen that. Okay. So I have created now I am going to use my source schema. Okay, in the source schema I have all my table. Okay, what table I want to create from this uh, stage. I missed the put command, right? Okay, okay, sorry. I, I forgot to do this. Okay, because it's light. I, I forgot. Okay, I can go again the source schema. Okay, so now you have to put your file into your stage. Okay, I'm just using the put command. Okay, where you have to use this one. It is inside your snow SQL. Actually, what uh, uh, actually I have opened that. So I'm getting this one. But if you're uh, newly opening that first, it will ask you your ID. Okay, first you have to type this no SQL. What is your identifier like account identifiers and what is your username and then it will ask you password. You have to enter the password and you have to use the which database you have to use it, which schema you have to use it, uh, which user you have to use it, everything you have to give. Then only you can use the put command. Now I'm using put command because I have already mentioned everything. Okay, so now I am using one file which is CSV. Okay, I'm just Uh, actually, which is available in my local. Uh, sales source my stage. Okay, does not authorized. Okay, let me check. Uh, stage is created or not. View schema. Okay, I can create my stage. Okay, stage is created. Okay, I can copy this. Okay, so now what it will happen? So in my stage, I have order in CSV file. Okay, go and check it in your uh, list. 
okay where is the list okay in this list it will show what are the files you have uploaded in your stage right so now you will get one file which is order hyphen in csv okay and i am just going to uh, keep the same way uh, the json file also okay which is available in my local so this is the path of this file okay so it's available now okay if you want you check your list it is available okay so now what i have done so i have moved my file which is there in my local to stage right so i have created two file format okay that uh, uh, i have already created no problem okay let me check what is the stage data okay how you can check the stage data because i am going to stay i am going to check what the data which is inside my stage order hyphen in csv file okay so while i am using the copy into uh, before using the copy into command i can check that what is the file which is available in your stage but you can't call directly so you have to call by dollar 1 dollar 2 dollar 3 what is this dollar 1 indicate that is nothing but the first column in your csv file this is the second column such a way only you can able to see your data which is available in your stage okay this is also will give you the table format okay and inside this you can add explicitly what is the file format you want to give okay so the file format which i have already created which is available in the common schema you can add it okay just run this query you can able to see the file which is uh, available in your stage okay this is look like a file which is available in your stage okay but you are not seeing my local data that's why you are just bringing if you want you go and check my local data which is uh, order dot in right okay this is my local data okay local file so it, which is same look like a like a stage while you are querying you are getting the same thing okay that is what i want to explain and next you can create one more file you have it right the json file so the same way i can call the json file also okay i can use the file format is json format just run and check the same format only the same uh, number of columns because both are have the same file uh, but the different file format that's the only difference okay all the data which is look like a uh, sales in it's like a sales uh, us okay and next what i am using already i told you we have to use the fx right the foreign exchange rate data i have to create it in my common schema because this is also common to all other schema okay that's why i'm just keeping in my common schema just use the common schema now every time you have to check the schema where you want to keep it as the proper place you have to use it okay otherwise you will get a mess up with the things so don't do this okay i'm just creating one table okay i'm creating one table so then what i'm doing so i'm using the copy into command before that i have to put this right put this in your stage because i have to keep okay then use this list command okay list command go through the list command now you have three files one is india us and uh, does not common my okay because it is in the common right now i have to move to the source then check this internal stage why because internal stage is in the source schema okay i have three got it so uh then you may ask what is this in the file right uh, let me see that file also my local i have exchange okay this is look like what is the exchange rate on that particular day what is usd to usd usd to europe what is usd to canada and what is indian rate what all the data it's there in your exchange table okay so that is what i have created in the common schema so let me move to the common schema again okay and now let me copy okay now only i am using the copy into command for the first time right what is the use of this copy into command it will do 
uh, whatever the table which is available in your stage, it will move to your table, which I have created now. So the table name is exchange rate. So what I have to use copy into the table name from whatever you want to take from your stage. OK, now I have mentioned each and every one. Otherwise you can use select. Uh, select star from uh, stage also you can make it, but I am just mentioning this. OK, no problem. This is the way it's a format of uh, calling this copy into command. You can use it. So suppose if you want to skip any column also, you can do here. OK, suppose you are getting 10 columns out of that. I need only 5 columns. You can skip that remaining 5 and use the only 5 columns which is needed for you. OK, now I have created the exchange rate table. This is the first time I'm doing from stage to table, right? So how many records is passed? 134. So if you want to check select star from that exchange table, you will get the table. OK, so you got as it is in the Excel, right? The CSV file format you are getting. And next to what I'm doing, we are moving the internal stage because uh, now I have the internal stage, all those two. Uh, CSV file format and the JSON file format, right? So those files I have to move to the source table. OK, so before that I'm just creating uh, move to the source schema. OK, I move to the source schema, check it here and I'm creating two sequences. I already told you why I have to create this sequence, right? OK, so to create the surrogate key for each table. OK, and then what I'm checking, uh, I'm, I'm if you want you show the sequences, the two sequences is created. OK, the two sequences is created in the source schema. I'm creating the table. OK, so the table I'm creating as per the files uh, columns available in your um, stage. OK, so I'm just creating this. Uh, table. OK, first one is for the India. OK, OK, the name is IN sales order and other one is for the US sales order. OK, which is available in your source schema. OK, it's created now. So what I'm doing, I'm going to load my data from the stage to table by using this stored procedure, not stored procedure. I'm just going to use this Python. OK, I can call this Python code. I don't have time to explain this, but it, if you know. Python, you can go easily. Copy, I can paste it in the. OK, OK, here, what is this? It is nothing. The worksheet with Python. OK, so what I'm doing, I uh, uh, the best way you have to move this into source because I'm just using the source table, right? And then you have to use the setting return type is very important. What is the return type of this? So here the return type is success, right? So I have to change the return type is worker or string. OK, it is a very important thing. First, you have to check what warehouse, you, what database and what schema you have to use and the setting. Go and check what is the return type of this. Python coding, OK, or this uh, functions or procedures and then you can go and deploy, run it. OK, run it. Let me uh, wait for the success. Then let me go what is inside I have written. But you know that why, why I have used this to move the data from the stage to uh, table. Obviously, I have to use the copy into command only. So the same way session, uh, session dot SQL all this copy into command. OK, we know this what this copy into command as like the um, exchange. OK, on error I can continue on the file format. I have used the CSV and which, uh, uh, which, uh, which stage I have to use this one. OK, you may ask why you are ask why you are making this last. It's nothing. So if the line is uh, if you are making uh, in Python, obviously you if, if you are extending some lines, you can use this. OK. Uh, and the same way the US also. And here I have created the session because here I have two functions. I'm just calling the functions through this main functions. OK, this is the basic things you know about the Python. OK, so now you go and check 
the table because I haven't uh, used the copy into command directly on uh, this NoSQL, right? That means this uh, um, worksheet. Now, let me check what does in the select star from the US table and Indian table. Now you have the data, right? Have you got it by using that procedure? In that procedure, I have the copy into command. Okay, and the same way I can see the in also. Okay, got it. Okay, so now I am going to do one more thing. Okay, so this is look like uh, uh, like the full code I have to run every time, right? But I can change this as a procedure also, like how you are doing in the SQL. Just you have to do one more thing. So before that, I will copy this. Okay, I have given the name for this procedure is stage to source table procedure. Okay, I'm just keeping this. Okay, just go to your code, which you have run now. Now, instead of run, go to deploy. Okay, here you give any procedure name, what I you have desired for this. Okay, and don't forget to give the handler is main. Okay, and deploy this. It's automatically will create the procedure for a URL. Okay, this is your procedure name. Okay, control C done. Go and uh, run this call because how will you call the procedure? Uh, normal in SQL, you will use execute command. Here you can use the call command. Okay, before that you want to check already there is a data. Okay, let me truncate that first. Let me truncate uh, the source table. Okay, for your understanding, I'm just selecting now. OK, it's there is no data, right? The same way you in also I don't have data. OK, now instead of calling that whole Python script, I'm just calling the call procedure. This is what I can use it in your task. OK, I can directly call the call procedure. It's success. Then you just select this one. Now you will get the data. OK. OK, such a way you will get it this also. OK, don't worry. It takes time. So what I have done the same script I have converted as a procedure, but procedure is not look like that one, right? How it will look like. Let me go and check it in the demo. Sales. With schema, it is in the source schema. Go to the procedure. You have the procedure. OK, what I have created now. So go and look the procedure script. OK, it is looked like a normal procedure. OK, in the uh, snowflake, what you mo mostly what you will use this uh, language is SQL. You might you might use right. So now you have to use the Python, but obviously you can write this also. You can make first the script and then automatically convert that into your Python uh, like a snowflake procedure. OK, this is a way you can convert your script into procedure. OK, let me move to the worksheet again. Okay, so now you have converted your stage data into table, right? So what is the next one? I can move to the curated layer, right? I can move to the curated layer. Where is this I have done. This I have done. Okay, so next we can go. Okay, next step seven. So now you have to move the source table or source zone table into curated layer tables. Okay, so because you have to make some transformation, sometime you can use the one to one transformation, but additionally, I have to use one surrogate key. So extra, I'm just using one surrogate key. So for that, first let me move to the schema curated first. Every time you have to be very careful on the schema. OK, and then you create these two sequences in your curator schema. OK, it's successfully created. Now you are creating two tables. OK, because you have seen the curated. What I have added extra only I have added extra sales order key, which is your calling from the sequences. OK. 
remaining all is same, one and the same in the source. Okay, you can copy paste the same thing. Okay, and create this uh, US order also. Okay, now the table is created, the sequence is created. Now you should call one procedure to move your data from your source to curated. Okay, just I'm using the schema source. Okay, don't forget that. Okay. Uh, okay, then copy this. Because I have created two procedures. Why? Because uh, one is for the US, one is for the um, India. Okay, copy. I am pasting here. Control A, Control B. Okay, so what it is doing roughly, I'm just going through it. Uh, first, it is taking the data from the uh, source. Okay, what it will do? Session dot SQL select star from your India sales order. Okay, it is taking the whole data and doing some transformations. Okay, uh, if you have a time, just see this transformation. What I have done. Okay, then what it is doing? It is creating another data frame from this existing transformed data frame and you are getting this data. Okay, these columns you are taking from the final sales DF. That what I'm going to uh, save in your, let's see, final sales data frame, right dot save as table in the sense, this data frame now moved as a snowflake table. Okay, from this data frame, I have created the table which is available in your Snowflake. This is what I have done here. Okay, just I'm taking data from the source table which is available on the uh, Snowflake. Okay, available on the Snowflake and, and I'm doing some transformation. It is a simple transformation. I, I told you already it is one to one transformation only. Just see that what are the additional uh, command with column I have used to that and all you have to check because uh, with column is not available in the existing uh, the country is not existing um, uh, file uh, which is available in the source is not having. So just we are adding the little things about um, magnifying those data. Okay, and finally you are calling this columns. Okay, which is available in your curated layer table. Okay, these all will be available in your curated layer table. Okay, that you are taking from the transformed data frame. And then you are converting the data frame into the snowflake table. That's all. First, you have converted the table into data frame. Finally, you are converting the Q, like a transformed data frame into another one table in your snowflake. That is what I am doing. Okay, just run this. Okay, if it is success, you can go and check your curated layer table. Okay, it's success. You can go and check it in your. Okay, in this uh, table you can call. Okay, because it's a India, right? So you can check here. You will get the data. Okay, you got the data, right? And suppose if you want to go with the previous way, you can do it. Okay, I just uh, made it. Uh, but uh, now I'm getting time. Okay, anyway, I will do it. <clears throat> what I should do, just I'm recalling once again. So go to the setting properly, it is available. Yes, go to the deploy and copy paste the name. Okay, just change this is the main and deploy. Okay, once it is deployed, it will be created that procedure which is available in your source schema. Okay, I don't want to go and check it now. Okay, just go and truncate the table. Okay, the same way what I have done earlier. Truncate and then check the table again. It is empty now. Check the table, now it is empty. Now go and check the call. Okay, if you call, you will get the success. After the success, Mm 
after the success you go and check check your select star from the particular table you will get the data as like a before one okay got it right the same way i got it okay the same way i have to do for the curated us table also okay i can copy this i don't want to explain again because the same way only what i have explained earlier uh just some few changes instead of india i have to use some us something so just go and check this uh, string and the data warehouse everything it should be paka then go to the run after success you can go and check your dip Okay, success. You can go and check this curated uh, US. You have data. Okay, yes. And uh, I don't want to go with now. Okay, so just I'm skipping these steps. Okay, obviously you will get it. And next, let me go to the dimension. Okay, how you are going to create the data model. So for that, I have to create some dimension tables and sequences. Okay, let me go to the schema consumption. Okay, move to the consumption. Then you check here. It should be mode. Yeah. So then you can create some sequences which is needed for the dimension table because dimension table is not having the primary key. So for that, you are creating the circuit key. So you are creating first one is region dimension okay so check region dimension is created okay so which has the region id country okay region id pk is created from the uh, the sequence and the country and region which is taken from the baseline table okay is active is created uh, okay and then you create uh, if you check now region dim there is no data okay let me after complete the procedure let me come and check you have the data and then use the same consumption, create the sequences for the product. Okay, created. Now created the product dim. So this is also uh, from the baseline table only you are creating. Okay, and which has this uh, mobile key, brand, model, color, memory, everything about the product details. You will get it from the product dim. And the next one you are creating the customer dim. So for that, I am creating one sequences. Okay, created. I am just calling this uh, table. The table which has uh, the table is having the customer name, customer contact number, all the details about the customer. We have it. Uh, you may ask me why you are how you are getting these all. It is all from your uh, table which is available in your curated one day. Okay, again I am creating one more uh, dimension table regarding the payment. Okay, the payment, how, what is the mode of the payment, everything, it will be there in the dimension table. Okay, you can explain this as per your project view. Okay, and finally, I'm creating one fact table. Okay, so fact table is created. Now check the fact table, there is no data and all the dimension table also no data, right? Okay, now we can move. Okay, if you want, you can create this uh, foreign key, but it is not enforced in your um, snowflake. Uh, but explicitly, if you want, you can use it, but you have to be keen with the primary key and foreign key uh, while you are inserting the data. Okay, so it's created, but it's not needed. It's created. Okay, now I am making this Python script for creating this dimension table and the fact table. Okay, the full thing is for, okay, uh, so control A, control B. So change to the consumption, don't forget. Okay, so now, so you can see the return type is data frame, right? So you have to set the setting, return type is the table. Okay, so I don't have time to explain this. Okay, so here I'm just calling this create dimension, create di region dimension to create. The... Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. I'm getting disturbed. Uh, already I'm in delay. It's getting disturbed. 
so create region dim by uh, like a, a region a dimension table is cr created by this create region dim definition or a function and the product dim is created by this create product dim function and uh, customer dim is created by the customer create customer dim procedure or uh, functions and the same way the payment mode also just go through it uh, it, it, it's very easy only if you know python or pyspark it is very easy to go through it because the very simple concept only i used here okay and inside the main function what i have used that is very important right what are the table i have used here I just took the table from the curated layer, the US sales order and Indian sales order. Okay, then I am merging those two or I'm making the union of those things. Okay, that's all I'm doing here. Okay, and I'm calling all these functions. Okay, just I did the union of these two data frame. Okay, I just merged or I, I union uh, or I joined these two tables and then I call these functions. Okay, to create the all the dimension table. Okay, that is what I have done here and later part I have created as per the table how I am changing that. Okay, that is a very simple concept and finally you are getting your all dimension table. Okay, see here all your dimension table you are getting. Okay, and your fact table. Okay, this is your fact table all sales df dot right savers. It's your fact table. Okay, let me go and check. Uh, okay, I may run this node, right? Okay, run. Now you are not getting success. Instead of that, you will get the data frame. Okay, fact data frame, you will get it. But you can use the success also, no problem. But for the changes I told you, no, uh, the setting, you have two options for the return type. What happened? What happened? Oh. Because I don't want to change that uh, uh, this one, right? The warehouse details because uh, last time I, I lost my account because of that. Okay, so now you got it because what I mistake I did means it's uh, consumption. It is not there. It's in the curated. Okay, and then go to the demo. Okay, now you check all your tables. Okay, you can check your all dimension table. Okay, one by one we can see the dimension table first region table uh, before creating this procedure. It was empty. Now you have the data, right? Because I have only two country. So two region. I have two region details. I have it. This is what I have get it from that procedure. Okay, you can create that as a procedure also by the existing way. What I have told you uh, use that also and then uh, regarding the next table. Where is the next table? Uh, this uh, uh, customer dim. Anywhere I have used to select star. Okay. 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 Such a way you can check all. Okay. So customer dim all your customer details will be available. All the phone numbers, shipping details, all the details will be available. Such a way you can check your payment dim also. What is the mode of transfer like uh, which which uh, card uh, be, uh, it's a credit card or some other cards. Uh, all the details you will get it from this payment dim. <clears throat> and one more dim as I missed. Uh, what is that? It's a product. Okay, product, right? Product. Okay, all four is available now. 
whether it is a mobile means which uh, which all details you get it okay what brand what model what color what memory usage everything you will get it okay how you are getting and all you have to go through that procedure and you have to see that okay and finally let me come to the fact table this is the fact table let me check now what is there in the fact table uh, you have all the data right which has all your region id uh, fk okay uh, why because i have to use this one means uh, i don't know how many of you know this data modeling suppose uh, from the data modeling uh, if the business if they are asking any customer details what they will do it they will join the customer dimension table along with the fact table and then they will take the data or records from that if they want to check the product and along with the amount of how much amount they have you uh, they have sell for that particular lg or particular mobile so they can join the product them along with the fact table and they will get the data what is they wanted okay this is what they are using in your data modeling and what the business is doing on your data mart okay so due, uh, due to the time con consumptions i'm just not doing this procedure and all okay but you try you try this all like how you can uh, use again this uh, this procedure in your task to automate this all those process okay that is what i said the task you can call the procedure okay some people they know this very well those who understand the stream and task concept so in that task you can use this call this function the call this procedure and it automatically will schedule according to your uh, business okay that's all uh, about the etl process or elt process in your snowflake end to end project any doubt uh, so participants uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask your uh, questions so now it is uh, q and a session so you can unmute yourself Participants, you can unmute yourself. And if you have any doubts, you can ask. So already I have shared the link to download the certificate and the speaker code for getting the certificate. You can access the link as well as the speaker code in the chat. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just wait. I will share the screen and I will announce the speaker code. The secret code for downloading the certificate is L F Y P B C. Again, I will repeat L F Y P B C. Now, let me uh, explain how to download the certificate. Just you go to the portal www.tuktaya.com. Tuktaya.com. So now you can find uh, events. Either uh, you can go and click the events. Yeah, you can find the event over here. So or you can search directly. You can search the past events. No? Uh, just you, you can search the past event uh, delivered by uh, there is all. Just you can click sessions and swap like. Yeah, you can access the session over here. Uh, this is a high level overview of Snowflake. like. Uh, it is the recently delivered by uh, Theresa. And this is a current session. No, just you can click enroll and you can register as a guest. In my case, uh, so I'll provide different mail ID. Yeah, it's, it's just... So I already I have registered. So now, in my case, no, I already downloaded the certificate. So it is uh, the link is uh, 
visible for me as download certificate. In your case, it will be a claim certificate. You can click that uh, link and you can provide the speaker code for getting the same, getting the certificate. That's all for the certificate test. Uh, <clears throat> I hope that uh, all of you enjoyed the session and uh, that's an excellent session on Snowflake ATM. Uh, Teresa has uh, done, a, done a great homework uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this session. And on behalf of our deployment for you, we'd like to thank Teresa for providing an excellent session on um, ETL in Snowflake. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you all.